So we have this magnetic circuit and we want to analyze it. I have only drawn the front view of this magnetic circuit. Uh, a current carrying conductor is wound on the central lamp. The number of turns of this uh, conductor, these, uh, these are 400 turns. And all the dimensions are also provided. Uh, this uh, length from here to here is 30 centimeters and this length is also equal to 30 centimeters this length is also 30 centimeters and this length is also 30 centimeters this uh, breadth of this uh, core is 7 centimeters and also uh, this uh, is 7 centimeters this is also 7 centimeters the depth uh, that is not visible over here depth is also 7 centimeters this uh, air gap uh, it is uh, uh, 0 0.05 centimeters and the air gap over here that is 0 0.07 centimeters the relative permeability of this core that is uh, 1500 and there is also a fringing effect and to make the calculations more accurate we also take into account the fringing effect and uh, we uh, have this information that is fringing uh, this fringing uh, fringing effect results into an increase in effective cross-sectional area and this increase is 5% and uh, this current is 1 ampere and we want to determine the flux uh, in the left limb flux in the right limb so flux in the left limb flux in the right and flux in the central limb uh, we also want to determine the flux densities in the ear gaps that is uh, flux density in the right ear gap and flux density in the left ear gap so to determine that all these things what we need to de do is uh, first we can sketch the equivalent electrical so uh, electrical circuit uh, equivalent electrical circuit uh, this MF, MMF source can be represented by uh, a voltage source and the polarity of this can be determined by the right hand rule so flux lines uh, flow like this one from this central limb and from here these flux lines have two paths to follow some flux lines will flow uh, in this closed path and others will flow from this closed path so this uh, voltage this MMF source MMF is equal to number of turns into uh, this uh, current and then <coughs> what is the resistance uh, that uh, these flux lines uh, uh, have so resistance is uh, reluctance of this part that is from here to here that uh, all the flux lines all the flux lines uh, flow through this reluctance so all the current is flowing through this reluctance let's uh, write it by uh, this uh, RC the central limb and then we have two parallel paths for the flux lines uh, in the first parallel path uh, that is uh, from here to here we have a reluctance of this core so reluctance of this core uh, is uh, let's uh, write it by R R and uh, this uh, reluctance of this ear gap 
here gap right here gap and uh, some flux lines follow through other uh, path so the second parallel path and reluctance of this core so let's write it by r left and uh, reluctance of the left ear gap so this is equivalent electrical circuit uh, we can easily analyze this uh, uh, electrical circuit this flux is uh, flux in the central limb this flux in the right limb flux in the left limb so all these reluctances can be easily computed so we know the relation for reluctance reluctance is given by l over mu multiplied by a so this uh, reluctance of the central limb is uh, this length uh, this length uh, from here to here what is that length so here to here is uh, 30 centimeters and then a half of seven and half of seven so 37 centimeters to convert it into meters so 37 divided by 100 mu is equal to uh, mu naught multiplied by mu r relative permeability of this core that is also provided to us that is 1500 1500 multiplied by 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 multiplied by a what is uh, area cross section area of this central length so this length multiplied by the depth that is the cross section area so 7 cm is this length and depth that is also provided to us that is also 7 cm so 7 divided by 100 multiplied by 7 divided by 100 to convert it into meters so you can perform all these uh, computations so that comes out to be equal to 30,000 30,000 ampere turns per weber Similarly, the reluctance of this right limb, that is RR, that is equal to this length, length from here to here. We can even uh, exclude this uh, length for more accuracy. Otherwise, it is very small. So even if uh, this complete length is taken, that will not result into too much inaccuracies. So this length... Uh, 30 plus uh, half of 7 plus half of 7 37 and 37 and 37 37 multiplied by uh, 3 so 37 uh, plus 37 plus 37 divided by 100 to convert it into meters divided by 1500 relative permeability of this core uh, and permeability of free space multiplied by cross sectional area so again cross sectional area of this uh, is the same as the cross sectional area of this limb that is 7 multiplied by depth uh, which is also 7 so 7 by 100 multiplied by 7 by 100 that uh, comes out to be equal to 90,100 100 ampere turns per vapor. Uh, what is uh, the reluctance of this ear gap on the right? So our ear gap to the right that is uh, L L is 0 0.05 divided by 100 mu in this case uh, here is uh, ear so mu r is 1 mu naught is 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 what is area of this uh, this thing 
cross section area the cross section area of this core is 7 uh, multiplied by 7 uh, so this uh, this length divided by multiplied by depth uh, however there is also a 0.5 percent increase in the cross section area so what is uh, the total area 7 by 100 multiplied by 7 by 100 multiplied by 1.05 uh, why this factor to incorporate 5% increase in the effective cross section area that is uh, a plus 5% of a 5% means 5 over 100 of a which is equal to 1.05 multiplied by a so this factor to incorporate 5% increase in the cross section area due to fringing effect similarly we can determine the reluctances of uh, this uh, left uh, limb are left uh, by similar expression the lengths cross section areas all these can be determined it comes out to be it is the same as this one 90,100 ampere turns per weather and the uh, reluctance of this ear gap to the left that can also be computed by similar calculations that comes out to be equal to 77,300 ampere turns per level. Now rest of the strategy is the same as we follow for electrical circuits. To determine this flux what we do is uh, you, can, you can follow several different approaches for example you can uh, apply uh, KVL uh, to determine this flux, uh, this flux and this flux. Otherwise, you can also uh, simplify this electrical network. Uh, how we can do that? The equivalent reluctance to determine uh, the flux in the central limb that will be equal to MMF, this MMF divided by the equivalent reluctance of this whole core. So what is equivalent reluctance? Equivalent reluctance is equal to reluctance of this central limb RC plus reluctance of this parallel combination. What is that parallel combination? The parallel combination of these two uh, reluctances. This reluctance is in parallel with this reluctance which you know is given by RC plus you already know how to find the equivalent reluctance for the parallel combination of uh, these uh, things. So that is equal to simply product of these two reluctances are R plus R ear gap to the right multiplied by R left plus R ear gap to the left whole divided by sum of these uh, two reluctances this reluctance and this reluctance simply substitute the numerical values which we have computed uh, so this comes out to be 120,800 ampere turns per vapor that is the equivalent reluctance therefore the total flux that is flowing through this central limb that is equal to uh, the MMF which in this case is 400 multiplied by 1 ampere 400 that is the MMF divided by the equivalent reluctance which we have computed and that is equal to 0.5 double zero double three vapor so how to find uh, the flux in this limb and flux in this limb uh, this total flux splits into these two parts so you can apply the current divider rule you can also follow other strategies but here maybe current divider rule is easier so what is flux in this right limb by the application of the current divider rule 
this uh, is equal to the total flux multiplied by resistance of the uh, reluctance of the uh, other uh, path that is uh, RL plus R ear gap into L whole divided by the sum of these two reluctances that is this is by the current divider rule which you already know that is the current in this branch is equal to total current multiplied by the resistance of other branch divided by sum of this and this uh, resistance so that is equal to similarly flux in the left limb can be determined by the uh, current divider rule similar to this one and that comes out to be equal to uh, sorry uh, this this is equal to 0 0.0029 Webers and this one is equal to uh, we are only left with the determination of uh, the flux densities in this ear gap and in this ear gap so flux densities in these ear gaps uh, flux density uh, in the left ear gap that is equal to the flux in the left limb divided by the cross-sectional area of the left ear gap. So this we have already computed in the left limb it is uh, 0 0.00193 Weber and what is cross-sectional area of this left limb? This cross-sectional area is uh, equal to uh, to calculate the effective cross-sectional area we know that that is 1.05 multiplied by uh, this area which is 7 by 100 multiplied by 7 by 100 so this factor to incorporate the fringing effect which is over there so you have uh, this flux you have this area so you can compute the flux density j just by substitutions this comes out to be 0 0.375 tesla Similarly, uh, flux density uh, in the right ear gap can be computed, uh, which comes out to be equal to 0 0.445 Tesla. To summarize all this discussion, uh, magnetic circuits are quite similar to electrical circuits. Uh, and to analyze magnetic circuits, the approach that we follow is first to draw equivalent electrical circuit and then to apply the same techniques that you have learned for the analysis of electrical circuits to analyze those particular magnetic circuits.